Welcome everybody! Happy Wednesday! I had to remember what day it was. Happy November! It's November 1st. I haven't seen you guys since October 11th. It's been quite some time. Let's see who's here today. Little says good morning. Bonnie, welcome back, Coach Cuso. Thanks, Bonnie. <laughs> Jackie says, greetings, lovely Jackie and friends. So nice to be back with Jackie. It's really nice to be back. I'm not gonna lie, I love being transparent on here. Uh, today was the first time in a really long time that I was like nervous before going live. Uh, I think it's because it's just out of my routine. I haven't been here in quite some time. Um, and I'm also trying this new thing. I'm just gonna tell you guys about it. Um, so you guys know, I talk about my TikTok all the time. I'm like really proud of it. And uh, while I was away, I finally reached that threshold of a thousand followers. So now I can go live on TikTok. So I'm streaming my TikTok live while I'm here on Insight Timer to hopefully bring more people from TikTok to Insight Timer. So I think that's also in my head, but it's really nice to be back here with you guys. Patty says, hi friends, so glad we're back. Eliza, hello. Jody, happy November, Jackie and friends from the Sea of Cortez in Mexico with a whale, two whales? Is that a shark and an island? I love it. I'll see you in a little bit, Jody. Welcome back, says Greg. Thanks, Greg. Elena, hello, glad to see you back. Tony, happy November. Charlotte, yay, Jackie's back. <laughs> Christine, hey, Jackie and peeps. Debbie, welcome back. Yvonne, hello. Melinda, hello. So I'll tell you guys about the retreat and then we'll recap all of everything that's happened for the last three weeks uh, because I'm sure a lot of you guys are dying to know. 44 people on Insight Timer, love it. And the clock was at 234 when I read that also. Um, like the timer clock. So you guys know that I was preparing for this 10 day silent meditation retreat for quite some time. I'm just gonna cut to the chase. It didn't happen. I didn't go. I made the choice to leave immediately upon entering the place because it wasn't my vibe. It did not sit with me the right way. And it was a very intuitive, as soon like I didn't even have the thought like my voice spoke for me and I was just like I'm gonna leave and I left and I was immediately at peace with my decision like immediately I called one of my girlfriends on the way home and she was like oh I'm so sorry it didn't work out I'm like it wasn't supposed to the universe just like did not want me to go there for 10 days and be silent right so then I had this whole like what am I supposed to do? I have all this time. Um, I actually, I just put this together right now. I got anxious because I had so much unscheduled time. And that felt really weird to me because I'm really good at like making my schedule. I'm really good at planning out my days. Okay, I'll be right here exactly at 8.15 a.m. 10 a.m. I'm here. And so I had 10 days of just... <laughs> So I, uh, I went to go visit our friend Bonnie. I drove seven hours to Cleveland to go visit Bonnie and I stayed with her for a long weekend. Uh, and that was perfect because she happened to have a free weekend, which was just, everything always works out, right? Um, and I was, so I was with Bonnie for the solar eclipse. I had a very huge revelation from that trip, just being out of my routine, you know? And then I came back and I, pretended I was on vacation and I forced myself to not work and I enjoyed my time and I followed my intuition and I followed my inspiration and what I wanted to do and I just had a really great 10 days. So sorry to let you guys down that I didn't actually go to the Vipassana retreat, um, but I'm a firm believer of everything happens for a reason. So that's it. That's my experience. Julie, thank you for being vulnerable. Greg says, whoa. Good morning, Christine. April, oh, that is so wild. I couldn't feel you there. That is wild. That's really interesting. That's really interesting. Um, and actually, that girlfriend that I called on my way home, she told me before I left, she's like, I, I just know you're not going to stay the whole time. And I feel like Bonnie said something similar, too. She just knew I wasn't going to stay the whole time. 
And they told me that before I went. And of course, my little stubborn ass was like, I'll show you, like, I'm going to make it out all 10 days because you guys, t you, you know, you're telling me that I'm not going to make it. So that was just interesting. Hello, Sharon. Nice to see you again, too. Greg says you didn't let us down. Appreciate you guys. So I am going to just kind of like recap what's happened since October 11th. We got together here on Insight Timer on October 11th and we talked about the two eclipses and then we talked about Scorpio season. So let's recap those three. I'm gonna reuse my notes, right? Just to refresh what we talked about three weeks ago um, to see if you guys have felt any of this monumental faded eclipse change. So um, we'll recap just those three things and then we'll pull some cards asking about stuff. I don't want to ruin the surprise. So we had our Libra new moon solar eclipse on the 14th. And this happened at 21 degrees of Libra. The sun and the moon were at 21 degrees of Libra. So if you do have your chart, if you do have your natal chart, you can look at the Libra section so Libra is the one that looks like a straight line with like a little circle over the top. So you can look for Libra and see if there's anything around 21 degrees there. If there is, then this new moon solar eclipse was happening right on that planet. If there's nothing there, you can look towards the center of your chart to see which house that the new moon in Libra was impacting. And that can give you a little bit of insight around what area of life this new moon solar eclipse was bringing up for you. So 21 degrees of Libra is where this happened. And the reason that it is an eclipse is because it is close enough to the south node that it's, you know, a monumental new moon. So the south node of the moon represents karma that's ready to be released. So it is kind of opposite and backwards to have a new moon on the south node. It's, it's a little counterintuitive. Um, but I described this as like a fresh new beginning with the new moon in regards to letting go of your old karmic debt. So shadow side of Libra is what we're focusing on when it comes to the south node in Libra. The shadow side is people pleasing keeping the peace to your own detriment. Shadow side of Libra can also look like having trouble making decisions and being indecisive. So within the last two weeks, have you felt any shifts in maybe even just like making a conscious mental decision to no longer people please or to no longer put yourself last, no longer make sure that no one else is upset so that you can keep your inner peace. Elena says yes. Um, yeah. This, the, on a personal note, this eclipse, the, the new moon happened a couple degrees away from my moon, and the full moon happened one degree away from my sun. So for me, this is a really personal eclipse season. Um, and I'm trying not to make this, like, all about that. But I had a huge, like, a day or two after the the solar eclipse, I was like, I know exactly what my new beginning is. Um, personally, I'm going through this whole restructuring of masculine energy and feminine energy. What what they are? What is the difference? Uh, where do I fall within the two? Um, Bonnie says that thing about don't meet your heroes. B.S. Spend a weekend with your hero. It's magical. Bonnie, thanks. Sharon says, that's me, indecisive. This new moon has helped, can, you know, it's helped you have an opportunity to start letting go of those indecisive qualities, right? Especially with the North Node in Aries, you need to do it your way. Christine says, bingo, Melinda, definitely. Carrie, I was miserable at my job, but stayed there for stability. I finally resigned on Monday. That's so exciting, Carrie. That's super scary. Um, that's That can be scary and enthralling at the same time. Uh, but you know that you're 
you're rocking the boat on purpose because right libra wants to remain balanced libra wants it to be equal on both sides i have my money i have my time when you throw it off balance it's gonna be uncomfortable for a little bit but then you get to bring it back into perfect harmonic balance and not just this going with the flow it's comfortable it's stable i'm just gonna keep it here so that's super exciting carrie Patty, oh gosh, oh my god, just Sunday I decided that after 67 years of putting others first, it was time to make my happiness my priority. Congratulations, Patty. That's huge. That is so exciting. So exciting. I can't imagine how much of a weight off of your shoulders that feels. Happy North Node and Aries, my darling. <laughs> Karen says, yay, Carrie. Good for you, Melissa. Hello. Welcome back. Thanks, Melissa. Bonnie and Christine are clapping for you, Patty. This, this solar eclipse that happened two weeks ago, and I guess the reason I'm still talking about this is because eclipses take six months or so to unfold and transpire, and their effects last for a really long time. So it's not like you know, a regular new moon where you you set your intention, then you wait for the full moon for it to manifest. Uh, these solar eclipses can last and last and last. So we're not beating a dead horse here. But this new moon, the one that just happened on October 14th, it gives us an opportunity to affirm and intend, a, uh, intend to practice the higher expression of the Libra energies. So like Patty and Carrie are describing that inner peace, bringing to balance the relationship that you have with all parts of yourself, right? Carrie needed to step up that, that independence, right? And Patty as well, stepping up that part of yourself, saying that I deserve better. I'm going to put this a little bit higher on a pedestal and I'm going to put, you know, it's not mean to put other people lower than you, uh, as long as it's not to their detriment right as long as you're not like stealing their resources to put yourself higher like you you're the main character in your story you get to put yourself first this is also a time of tuning in to trust natural law universal law karmic law trusting that whatever you put out is absolutely going to come back to you in divine timing you know it might not be immediate but if you're making the right choices you're gonna go somewhere allowing and trusting the universe to sort it out and balance it out for you. So that new moon solar eclipse happened at the end of Libra season. Um, if you guys have any more comments about it, feel free to throw it in the chat if you've found any other sort of balance in your life since then. Or relationships. Libra is also the sign of relationships to other people to different parts of yourself, to things, right? Re your relationship to your ideas, it, it's very vast. Also, while I was gone, the sun entered Scorpio. So Libra season ended. We started Scorpio season on the 23rd of October. And the sun is in Scorpio until the 22nd of November. So... This is kind of like a, a jam-packed Scorpio season. We have the Sun moving through Scorpio. We also have Mercury and Mars moving through Scorpio. I'm just double-checking my chart to make sure I'm not missing anything, yeah. Um, and that's a lot. And they're very close. The whole time, they're kind of like grouped together, moving all through Scorpio. So it's a whole bunch of concentrated energy. Happy belated birthday, Sarah. 1023. Um, the year that you were born, were you born when the sun was in Scorpio or was the sun in Libra that year? It's difficult when you're on the cusp because it's not like the sun doesn't follow the Gregorian calendar. I don't know off the top of my head, um, but that that could, you know, in 76, the sun could have still been in Libra on the 23rd or it could have been in Scorpio. So that's why it's difficult to go off of like the horoscope in the newspaper when you're on a cusp date because yeah, the sun the sun does what the sun does. It's natural, it's nature. The Gregorian calendar is made up. Good morning, Jennifer. So we have the sun, Mercury and Mars right now moving through Scorpio. 
Scorpio is linked to secrets. Scorpio is linked to, it's like the shadow side of us. It's the darkness. It's where transformation happens. It's where definitely, uh, Sarah says definitely feel like a Scorpio. It's where um, death and rebirth occurs. It's the sign of alchemy. We're in this time of alchemizing stuff that we found in Libra season that we're not necessarily a fan of, transmuting it into love, light, beauty, and gold, and then we can send it into Sagittarius season and the rest of the year. Uh, this period of Scorpio season might cause us to feel the need to dig up from the bottom, right? To dig deep down. Scorpio is the sign of investigation, having to get to the bottom of things, having to get all the answers, know all the details. Um, but the reason is so that you can sift through and sort through everything and find the best parts and bring it up to the top. Scorpio is ruled by Pluto. So I've been talking about Pluto quite a bit over this last year because he's finishing up his 20 year transit through Capricorn. So it, when we talked about Pluto, we talked about digging everything up from the bottom, exposing it, but then empowering what's for our highest good. That's Scorpio energy. They're kind of one in the same. Jackie says, hi, finally here out of physical therapy. Welcome, nice to have you. So um, the sun in Scorpio might be bringing some light to what you've been digging up. So shining a light on your shadows sometimes can make the shadows bigger <laughs> and appear scarier. But if you take that Scorpio energy to dig to the bottom and truly investigate, then you're able to see what is meant to stay and what's empowered, right? Then we had our full moon lunar eclipse, which just happened on Saturday. On the 28th, we had our full moon lunar eclipse at five degrees of Taurus. So when we have, and if you want to look at your natal chart, find the early part of Taurus. Um, Taurus looks like the glyph for Taurus is a circle with a little half moon on her head. Uh, so it, five degrees of Taurus. You can either see if you have any planets near five degrees of Taurus, the earliest part of Taurus. Remember when you look at your natal chart, it moves counterclockwise. So the opposite of a clock. So zero would be <laughs> like opposite. I can't describe it. I'm, I'm gonna need to make a workshop on how to read or how to find points and stuff in your in your chart. Oh, Christine's moon is very close to five degrees of Taurus. So this full moon lunar eclipse happened conjunct near your moon. Um, that could be why you've been so emotional lately. The moon represents your emotions uh, and full moons in general cause lunacy, the lunar moon, lunacy, crazy. Um, I'm way off track here today, guys. So the full moon lunar eclipse happened at five degrees of Taurus. You can look and see where the, um, what house the early part of Taurus falls in your chart. And then that can give you a clue into what area of your life was having this giant lunar eclipse, right? This giant culmination, this giant ending of a chapter. The reason that this is a full moon lunar eclipse is because the sun was at five of Taurus. The, sorry, the moon was at five of Taurus. The sun was across at five of Scorpio. So full moon is when the sun and moon are opposite of each other. And the moon was within 10 degrees of the north node. The north node of the moon is our north star. It's like our, our path, our guiding light. Um, in order to achieve our highest consciousness, we can set our attention on the North Node. This was, so this was a Taurus Scorpio lunar eclipse, but the North Node is a little bit behind at 24 degrees of Aries. So this was the final eclipse in that Taurus Scorpio axis that we'll have for about the next nine years. 
So for about the last two years, 2021, 2022, early 23, maybe early 2022 is when, yeah. So all of 2022, half of 2023, we had the nodes of the moon in the Taurus Scorpio axis. And this was highlighting the financial axis Taurus and Scorpio have to do with. Taurus is what I have. Scorpio is what I share intimately. So this full moon lunar eclipse was a big celebration, culmination, um, celebrating what you've learned for the last year and a half, specifically around themes of safety and security, Taurus, utilizing your skills, Taurus, gathering and using resources, Taurus. I'm trying to reflect on how that lunar eclipse transpired for me. That day was our Halloween party that we have every year and it's like my favorite time, right? I love my my house vomits Halloween every year. I there's like no dead space on the walls. There's Halloween decorations everywhere. I have this awesome playlist that I make and I play even when like trick or treaters are here and we have lights going everywhere. Um, but this year because of my retreat that I thought I was going to be gone for 10 days, I just kind of like turned off Halloween and threw it away. So we did like a bogus party. We did like bogus um, decorations and stuff. And the, the morning and afternoon as we were setting up for the party on the 28th, the day of this lunar eclipse, I was just so bummed out. I just so didn't want to have the party. I didn't want to be in the company of people. I just didn't want to do any of it. Um, and it was very, ugh. But then I went with the flow, and then my my good friend came towards the end of the party, and it was all good. But that's what I got from this lunar eclipse. But the days afterwards, um, as I was just reading about like utilizing your skills, gathering and using resources, I just purchased a course um, that I wasn't going to purchase. It was more expensive than I've ever, it was more money than I've ever spent on a course, but there's something about this one. I'm like, this has something for me. Um, and I feel like that is an eclipse moment for me uh, because eclipses can last for so long. So if there is something, you know what? Investments, that's very Taurus Scorpio. If there's something that you've chose to invest resources in lately, not necessarily money, right? Time can be a resource. Uh, investing time to learn a skill or to utilize a skill that's very Taurus Scorpio. Uh, investing in another person, investing energy and trust into another person. If there's something that's starting now, um, and, and give yourself like a month around that, that event. So like late September through late November. Um, if there's something that you're investing in, I advise you to check in in six months. Check in at the end of April next year and see how that investment has transformed your life, especially around whatever house this full moon happened in for you. So wherever this Maggie, the full moon happened at five degrees of Taurus um, just this past Saturday. So if you look to see what house five degrees of Taurus is in your chart, maybe at the end of April, you can check back on that area of your life and see how much has changed since October, which I think is pretty cool. Greg, this happened in your first house with no planets. It's okay that there's no planets, uh, but the first house is the house of self. It's the personality, it's the ego, it's how you view yourself. Uh, this could be physically as well, so how you look. Karen says, Scorpio sun and moon here. My birthday was on Monday. Happy belated birthday, Karen. <sighs> so, okay, that's right. I wanted to tell you guys a story about something that transpired with Insight Timer right around this eclipse season on the Scorpio Taurus axis. So we talked about the Scorpio Taurus axis being the financial axis. Taurus is what you earn. Scorpio is what you share. 
Uh, and I, the timing of this is just, it proves astrology, right? Like there's no coincidences. So on the 23rd, five days before the eclipse, we got an email from Insight Timer. I'm assuming all the teachers, right? I got an email from Insight Timer. And this is where they told us that Apple is now demanding 30% of the teacher donations. Um, if you guys have been on Insight Timer for a while, you know that this was a whole kind of hoopla. I don't know how long ago. I don't remember when this all shifted, um, but teachers were getting like 50% of their total donations and it was a big uproar. Um, so then Insight Timer like tweaked a whole bunch of stuff and they worked with the companies and they did all this stuff so that we could get 100% of our donations. And it was awesome and it felt great. And then on the 23rd, now Insight Timer is informing us that Apple is demanding 30% of all teacher donations that come through the live event. Why? Because the live event is considered a digital service. So I just think that this is so interesting that it's happening right at the end of this Taurus Scorpio uh, nodal axis that's been active for about a year and a half. Um, this, this felt very like culminating right? Like we gave you a hundred percent, but now we have to hold on to what is rightfully ours in their eyes, right? I'm not saying anyone's right or anyone's wrong. This is just objectively what happened, right? So what is mine versus what is ours? How much of, you know, technology are, am I actually utilizing when I come on here? If the platform didn't exist, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. Is 30% a fair number? It's just throwing out all of these qualms qualms you guys know i don't have the biggest vocabulary it's throwing out all of these variables around like what is mine mine <laughs> right taurus mine or what is ours scorpio what is meant to be shared um just yeah there are other ways so yeah you can you can go onto my teacher profile and donate there. That's not considered a digital service. Um, so that wouldn't be giving 30% to Apple. Um, you can, if you're on an Android device, I don't think that that impacts anything. So if you're on a, yeah. Um, or on my link tree, I have my PayPal link right there. So if you'd rather just go through PayPal and not through Insight Timer, it's a whole thing. Um, but my link tree is linked in my teacher bio. Uh, yeah, here we go. Like, somebody, let me, I'm going to read all these comments. Uh, if payments go through Apple. Right, there's other ways. <laughs> Apple really needs it. Karen's okay. We can wait to donate and you'll get the full amount. If you donate through my teacher profile. So instead of donating in the live, if you donate through the teacher profile, that's like a workaround because then, so I guess the reason Apple wants the payment is because it's a digital service. It's a live event. It's using the iOS, the Apple operating system to watch this service, right? So I get where they're coming from. Suzanne, I woke up in the middle of the night I woke up in the middle of the next night and the moon was streaming straight down through the skylight. I said hello, then went back to bed. It was cold, but I opened the window and can hear the coyotes howling to the moon. That's so special, Suzanne. I love that. I often say hello to the moon. I'll say hello, Luna. <laughs> um, Insight used to only take 20% to support running. Yeah, Insight was taking 20 and then Apple was taking 30. So I would get 50% of whatever you guys gave, gave. Greg says, I don't mind the charge. Apple hosts the whole thing. Their employees deserve the energy exchange too. I see both sides, right? So here's the Libra South Node coming in. My moon's in Libra. So I guess this is one of my downfalls is being, I can clearly see your point and I can see your point and I cannot make a freaking decision about it. That's one of my downfalls. I, I, I see it clearly from both sides. Apple realized how gorgeous and lucrative spiritual life is. <laughs> Good morning, Katie. Sarah says, thank you for how you framed it as neutral. There is a lot of complexity to these issues. As someone who works in tech, I know there's a lot underneath that isn't clear to most people. 
Yes, right? And here, here is me practicing what I preach. Nothing is good or bad. This isn't a good thing, right? This isn't a bad thing. The, these are our facts. What are we going to do with it? What, how are we going to choose to utilize it, right? If you appreciate, if you value what Apple is doing at 30% of your donation to me, donate through the live. If you even want to donate, right? If you don't value what Apple is doing, or if you don't agree with what Apple is doing, go through the teacher profile. That there's options, you know? Jackie says, so Insight Timer uses Apple to host their services. Seems Insight Timer would be big enough to host it themselves. I don't think I understand this. Neither do I. <laughs> I don't understand it. Um, yeah, I don't know what it takes to host a live event like this. I don't know, you know, I don't know all the streaming services available. I don't know who else can host it because Insight is huge and they want part of the cake. We can tell Apple to just sit and meditate. Again, though, it's not, and I'm, I'm not taking sides, right? I don't think Apple is right. I don't think Insight Timer is right. I don't, I don't even know when I'm right. Um, but can you blame them for wanting to capitalize on something, right? Isn't that what an investment is, is giving your service to a place where you can also benefit, right? Apple is giving their streaming service to a place where they're able to get some energy exchange out of it. It's just a whole thing. Sarah says, when I donate, it's for the teacher. I pay Apple enough when I buy their products. Bonnie says, that's because both sides can be simultaneously valid. Yeah, it's like a blessing and a curse. Thank, I like the way you put that, Karen. She says, so glad you told us so we can do what feels right to us. Um, oh, Bonnie, yeah. I think for me, it's about users not realizing the fee. If it's obvious, that would be better. Sure. Sure. And I guess there there's a little bit of my responsibility as a teacher on Insight Timer to communicate this to you guys, which I try to do unbiasedly. A Apple only supports billing and a platform for an Insight designed app, but Insight is aiming that way. Interesting. Happy to give Insight Timer a little cut. This is a huge platform, but I thought that's what my membership is for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 30% is only if you're donating with an Apple product, right, Katie? And Greg, right, it'll all change again someday, right? Nothing's ever permanent. So that's that's the whole thing. But let's get back to the astrology. Someone, Suzanne, says, Taurus is my 12th house with my sun, Mercury, North Node, and part of fortune. Is that a stellium? It is. I consider stelliums to occur when there are three or more planets or points. Um... So Sun, Mercury, North Node, absolutely. Part of Fortune is something a little bit more advanced in astrology that I'm not going to lie, I haven't even like dove into. Um, but yes, that is absolutely a Taurus stellium. If you guys notice in your chart that you have three or more placements in either a sign or in one specific house, even in two different signs, if the house overlaps the two signs. Um, that's called a stellium, and that means that you just have a lot of energy in that part of your life. There might be a lot of learning experiences for you in that part of your life, and we know that learning experiences can sometimes be fun and playful, and sometimes they can be the death of you. So. So if we donate after a live event to you, you can keep the whole amount. That's what I believe, Suzanne. Taurus in the 11th house. What's the 6th house? Um, Taurus in the 11th house is... Taurus is like stability and simpleness and basic needs, basic uh, resources. In the 11th house is for the collective. Um, Wow, I kind of see that, Karen, as like you, you're really good at gathering what everyone needs and being like, hey, I know you're trying to reinvent the wheel, but have you tried using the wheel? Um, that feels like Taurus in the 11th house. Angel, the 6th house is your daily routine. It's how you structure your day. It's the house of Virgo, so it's super detail-oriented. Um, 
I apologize, I got distracted. <laughs> Detail-oriented, uh, sixth house can be where our over-analyzing happens. Sixth house also rules your health, mental health, physical health, blah, blah. Ninth house, Jackie, is the house of Sagittarius. That is exploration. So it can be external exploration, physically moving places and looking around, or internal, um, exploring yourself, your philosophy, your spirituality. Mary Ellen, first house Taurus. We talked about first house with Greg. It's all about the self, the identity, the personality. When, um, Karen, I have five things in Scorpio in the fifth house. I never understood that. It, I feel the same. Um, the houses that are most stacked for me have been the hardest to understand. Um, and I wonder if that's just because there's like so much going on that it's difficult to get down to the basic nitty gritty. Um, I'm going to keep going with our talk today, but if you want, I do readings. Um, my, I do astrology chart readings. Everything's on a donation basis. And when you work with me one on one, I do get 100% of the donations. <laughs> um, you can find my link tree in my Insight Timer profile, and you can book with me there if you'd like to do a whole natal chart reading. So when I was here on October 11th, we pulled cards asking, what lessons are we learning this eclipse season? And then how does the Scorpio energy want to serve us? So three weeks ago, we before the eclipses even happened, we asked, what lessons are we learning during this eclipse season? We got courage, taking the lead, and intuition. So I'm just curious to hear if you guys have strengthened any of those lessons in your life. Intuition, right? Leaning on your intuition, trusting your gut. <clears throat> Excuse me. Taking the lead, doing the damn thing, and courage, having the courage and ability to do the thing. And we also asked, how does the Scorpio energy want to serve us? You know, we're, we're about a week, a little over a week into the Scorpio energy, um, but we got that animal card from the animal apothecary, the not so cowardly lion, relating directly to courage. The message was that it's in you. You don't need to keep looking outside of yourself. You need to dig deep inside of yourself. What a better Scorpio message, right? What could be a better Scorpio message? It's all in you. Just dig down there and find it. And that was the card that made me cry. <laughs> Y'all remember that? Today. Oh, there you go, Bonnie. Bonnie did the damn thing. She got her first Insight Timer track published. That's so exciting. It's, avail it's available in our spiritual community. That's the group that I have on Insight Timer. Our spiritual community. There's a link in my teacher profile if you want to join it. Um, that's exactly what it is. It is our spiritual community. We just chat. We share things. Bonnie has shared her meditation. Um, Rev is also an Insight Timer teacher that I just found out. She shared some meditations in there. Greg is on his way to getting his first one published. He'll share his track in there. Yeah, share your stuff. Collaborate. Join. Um, Bonnie also puts the updates of the oracle cards that I pull in our spiritual community. So you can, you can join there. Jackie says Bonnie's track is wonderful. Congrats from Karen and Greg. Love it. Christine says Bonnie, I now find you in Insight Timer as a teacher. I love it. Cool. So today, guys, we're going to ask what what is this eclipse season urging us to spearhead, right? It seems very apparent to me that the, the universe just wants us to do the thing. So we're going to use the Star Codes Astro Oracle to ask... I'm trying to do both. I told you guys I'm streaming live on TikTok today now, so I'm trying to like show both. Um, Star Codes Astro Oracle. We're going to ask, what is this eclipse season urging us to spearhead? And we'll see what comes out from these cards. So feel free to send your energy into this deck, tuning in with your highest guides asking what is this eclipse season urging us to spearhead 
And look um, what's on the bottom of this deck. I thought that was interesting. It's the Scorpio card. So we've had our new moon solar eclipse in Libra. A new beginning in balance. How did you rebalance your life? What, what part of your energy has been rebalanced? And then the um, lunar eclipse full moon in Scorpio. What secret did you close? Ooh, like what part of yourself did you look at that you've been denying to look at? And we'll see what is this eclipse season urging us to spearhead? Craig says spearhead is a cool word. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Feels like a shark to me. I get shark energy from spearhead. Cool. Um, I will show you the backs of the three cards. And I ask you to use your intuition to see which card may be speaking louder to you if one is speaking louder. If not, your intuition's not broken. It's just uh, the whole reading is for you. So here's the back of card number one. The back of card number two. And the back of card number three. Let us know which card or cards are calling out to you today. And I'll show them one more time, just in case. Lu Lucy just got here, but in time for the cards, love it. The back of card number one. The back of card number two. And the back of card number three. Elena asks, what house system do you use or recommend? Um, I recommend you use your intuition. I know that that like irks me every time someone says that. I use Placidus. Um, that I use Placidus. But play around with stuff. If other things speak louder to you, use it. Check out your chart in both. Check out people that you don't know in both and see which one resonates. Um, and I'm saying both because I'm just thinking of whole sign, but there are plenty out there. So just, yeah, feel into it. Jackie's working with all three. Bonnie, two. Rebecca, all three. Sarah, three. Greg, three. Carrie, three. Leah, two. AJ, all three. Lynn, two, John, one and two, Chantel, one and three, Debbie, one and three, Christine, one, Karen, two in my solar plexus, and three. Rebecca uses Campanus, never even heard of that. Christine, and three. Whole sign, I think I meant to say whole sign, not whole house. Um, so in Placidus, the houses change size depending on the time of the ascendant and all that stuff and that's where your houses can be um in between signs whole sign is where the whole first house is the whole sign of the ascendant and then the whole second house is the whole sign suzanne three two one twitch wise <laughs> three is greater than two is greater than one interesting elena all three April two, Melinda all three, Violet three, Maggie two. Cool. We asked, what is this eclipse season urging us to spearhead? I just glanced down at the cards. This is gonna be a really cool one. Very, very cool one. I already see how it's all coming together. All right, card number one. We are being urged to spearhead our seventh house, which pertains to relationship. Um, this is the house ruled by Libra, by the way. So I'm already feeling the October 14th connection to this right here. If your chart were a village map, the seventh house is anywhere two equals relate with 
intensity, and intimacy. Somewhere you'd have dinner on the balcony and watch the sunset. It is concerned with how other equals come into your life and how you interact with them. It includes marriage and open warfare, business partners, legal issues, key consultants, and advisors. Nurture your relationships rather than test them. Consider each partnership to be a tree you plant. That seed may have its new moon in Libra planting seeds. That seed may have been planted in the fifth house with an idea or a twinkle in the eye. Now you have a sapling with potential. Don't construct a tree house on that sapling. It can't yet bear the weight. Instead of crushing it with expectations, nurture and protect it. In any relationship, there are three involved. You, your partner, and that tree, the relationship itself. All have needs that must be honored equally. Make compromise for the sake of the relationship, not necessarily for the other person. Nurture that sapling. Keep it safe from predators and nourish its roots until it becomes a tree long, strong enough to lean on. Clarify your expectations with curiosity and flexibility. If you are offered a business partnership, read the fine print. Unpack your baggage, the cultural assumptions, and family patterns that inform your concept of partnership. Move past who is right and who is wrong and develop a fresh understanding. I'm itchy today. I don't know what that's all about. Partnership for work or love may look easier if you come from the same background. But the more diversity you bring to the table, the more resilient the relationship can be. Agree to contribute equally and celebrate your differences. There's a challenge and a gift from this card. The challenge is when you are working in tandem in love or in business, it can be tempting to give your power away to your partner or take over theirs. An unbalanced relationship can become untenable. What does that mean, Bonnie? What's untenable mean? The gift of this card is fertilize the ground of your partnership. Feed your partner with romantic moments and fair and honorable agreements. When you are fascinated by the spirit of another, they can become fascinated with you. Untenable, can't hold on to it. So an unbalanced relationship can become untenable. Thank you for your uh, vocabulary, Bonnie. So what... Are we being urged to spearhead this whole eclipse season? Our relationships. Nurturing our relationships instead of blaming that person for being wrong. Are there any things um, that resonate with you guys? Are you like kicking yourself for doing that? I love checking myself, right? I love doing that. I've been having... Um, a lot of relationship talks with my husband lately. I told you guys, from, from this eclipse season, I'm rebalancing masculine feminine, right? So I'm trying to step more into my feminine, but I don't even know what that means. I don't know what that looks like because I've been, it's so strong in my masculine for a long time in my life. So there have been a lot of conversations back and forth in the relationship of my marriage. Uh, and it is so much more productive when we keep the relationship at like the main focus and it's not my needs or his needs that are like the most important it's our relationship that is the most important so i'll just throw that out there Chantel says wow definitely my card having several relationship challenges lately and i had a dream with a tree house in it <gasps> the word tree house stood out for me with this card that's so interesting um, and I'm glad you said that because there is a, I had a reading actually a while ago about my husband 
and other things and a treehouse was prevalent in that and i didn't even realize that until you said that thanks chantelle that's really cool Sarah resonates looking at my expectations in relationships, seeing where there are a lot of unstated assumptions. I like that. It is difficult because in any relationship, right? Romantic, business, even with yourself, it can't, this can apply, but romantic relationships, business relationships, friendships even, one-on-one -on -one friendships, you don't come from the same background. And like, can you remember being a kid going to someone else's house and seeing that their family does it different and it was like your life was shattered? Like, you guys don't use a spoon to put jelly on your peanut butter and jelly? You use knives? What's wrong with you? Why do you do it different? You know, when you're a child, it's life shattering because it's the first time you've seen it. But then you grow up and you start to like see all these different people in the world and you just kind of notice like, oh, they're different than I am. You know, they don't do it the same way that I do. But then when you can check yourself and sit with, they have a completely different background than I do. They don't have the same opinions and thoughts and automatic thoughts that I do. How can we do this together? Bonnie, I'm not even going to read that out loud. There's two people on my TikTok live right now. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Jody says, perfect card for me. I am a partner in a new teaching collective in Flagstaff, Arizona. We are a baby tree and need to nurture it. Yeah, I love that. Greg, the nurturing concept really speaks to me. So easy to let fears and worries get in my way of relating. Suzanne says, so true. Beautiful. All right, card number two, uh, what lessons are, or sorry, what is this eclipse season urging us to spearhead? It is card number 36, the midheaven, and this is the pinnacle. The midheaven contains clues about how your family trained you to be visible in the world your relationship to other people's authority, and how you step into your own personal authority. It describes the future mountaintop, the pinnacle of your work in the world. The midheaven is the highest point of the chart, where the sun would be at midday. This most public, visible point of the chart acts like the flagpole on top of your personal castle. Inventory your professional reputation and ask what you can do to strengthen it. Update your website. Look at your definition of success and make sure it is your own, it actually makes you happy, and is not one that you have inherited from your family or your mentors. Think about the training you've received from these authorities and notice where it still serves you and where you need to release their preconceptions and step into something bigger. You may need to go back to hidden dreams or reawaken an ambition that may not make sense to anyone else. If you choose not to seek your sense of accomplishment as reflected in the outside world, the midheaven can speak of a quieter sense of personal authority. This is your life. Define the mountaintop for yourself. Take a next step in that direction. The challenge for this card? Traditions, other people's expectations, or your family history can be complementary to your idea of your own potential, or they may be hurdles to overcome as you find your true path. Gift of this card? Underneath all worldly sense of ambition is a soul's longing to live out its potential. Listen to the call. This is uh, a redefining of what success looks like to you. Uh, and what I'm feeling right now is a lot of like dreams that you all have about how you want to show up in the world, the gift that you want to share. And then you have that little automatic voice in the background that might have been your parents, it might have been your teachers, it might have been your coaches, it might have been like someone that you looked up to. And it's that little voice and it's saying like, that's not how you do it. No, 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 you have to go this way. And that's not necessarily true. That's a, a learned belief. And a lot of times we pick up beliefs that are based on the fears of the people who taught us. 
A lot of times we pick up beliefs that are based on the fears of the people who taught us. It's not good or bad, right? Everything just is. Everyone gets messed up by their parents for one reason or another, and everyone's gonna mess up their kids if they have them, and it's just a whole learning experience. But what I've specifically been learning for a long time that I would love to share with you is that the road to success is not how you're taught. It's actually breaking the mold that is what brings you success. Following the path, following the steps that the world has told you that's how you become successful. It's not. Uh, it's not. And the only way to figure it out is to do it yourself. Like, I really don't like giving that advice, but it is the true advice. You have to face your own fears. You have to put your questionable mind aside and do what your soul wants to do. That's how you're going to reach your pinnacle is by following your soul calling, not by following what other people have prescribed to be your soul calling. And it can be difficult too, because those beliefs can be so ingrained. Like I still, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know what I want out of my business. I'm still trying to figure out what my goal is um, for myself. You know, it's really easy for me to say like, I want to help people learn this and I wanna see people grow and change in this way. But like, I have no idea what I'm reaching for, for myself. I don't have a number in mind. I don't have like a house in mind, I, you know? Um, and that's because I know that what I've been taught is not in alignment with me and I'm still finding my alignment, if that makes sense. Suzanne says this really resonates, have been visiting and chatting with a lot of family lately, thinking about everyone's different conceptions of success. Yes, there is no one definition of what success is. And we are gonna run over the hour today, just letting you guys know. I have one more card in this spread and then I'm gonna pull a card from another deck as well. So bear with me for maybe 10, 15 minutes. Violet says, that's amazing. Heard a Brene Brown podcast this morning that said the same thing. Sometimes it helps me to get clear on my thoughts when I write stuff down. Um, it helps me get it out of my brain and onto concrete. So it might, if this resonates with you, it might be a good practice to write down how the people around you, the people who raised you might define success, what they see as successful. Um, and sit with each point for a solid 30 seconds to a minute. Sit with it, gaze at it, feel it, and ask, like, is that what I think is success? Christine, oh wow, this is my card. Mind blown, I love it. Suzanne, how best to be me, not what others think it should be. Yep. April, oh my, I have been in this for six days about my business here in Japan and feeling a huge pull. Step up or step onto the other calling path. Oh my God. Maybe card three can bring you some alleviation to that question. What else is this eclipse season urging us to spearhead? Hi, Rachel, welcome. Here's card number three for today. It is number 39, the first house. And this is the card of arrival. The first house describes how you enter the world, your first impressions, and the birth of your journey of self-discovery. If your chart were a village map, the first house would be the gateway and information center. Planets in the first house are just about to rise over the eastern horizon, where the sun would be just before dawn, so we feel them strongly. Take responsibility for how you are perceived. As you walk in the door, assess what you lead with, what your mannerisms, appearance, and signals say. Notice if you lead with charm or prickly defenses with your mind or your heart, or whether you are versatile, changing your approach to fit the circumstance. Investigate how this first impression affects your identity and interactions. People read what you put out, whether you are acting as a business, as a person, or as a couple. 
and it's up to you to ensure that how you present yourself matches your intention. If you feel misunderstood, look for a misperception, yours or theirs, underneath any tension, and see what can be done to clear this lens. If you strive to be invisible, neutral, or enjoy an air of mystery and play your cards close to the chest, it becomes easier for others to project their assumptions onto you. Consider becoming more transparent and letting your inner worth shine. The first house can also bring with it a surge of temper or other strong emotion that rushes to your head like mercury in a hot thermometer. If this happens, bring your awareness back down to your feet. This metaphor also applies to a business or a project. Leadership may be too strong and attention needs to be brought back to the boots on the ground. The challenge of this card? You are challenged to see beyond the shallowness of appearances, see behind smoke screens, and take responsibility for how you are perceived. The gift of this first house card. Evaluate how you interact with the world as the beginning of a journey of self-discovery. Um, this card brings up a lot, but the strongest message that kept popping in is fake it till you make it. Um, I heard that the first time it sunk in is when I was in student teaching. I went into that experience with so much self-doubt. I would see the other teachers who were, you know, they, they were tenured. They had to be tenured to be teach or to be hosting me, right? So they had been doing it for 10, 20 years. They, they had so much experience. They were so good. Um, I was just a student. I was just a college student. And the one teacher told me, just fake it till you make it. And I took it to heart and it gave me the comp because she saw it in me, right? Like if you're, if you're pulled to do something, you can do it. It's just your mind and your perception of yourself that talks you out of it. You're completely capable of doing anything, right? They tell you that when you're a kid, I still believe it. You are 100% capable of doing anything that you want to. Fake it till you make it. What energy are you putting out? Right? If you're putting out this like shy, mm, I don't know if I'm good at this, so I'm going to try my best. Okay, I'm just trying. It's, I'm doing it for the first time. If you put that out, what do you think people are going to get from you? They're going to get, they're unsure. They're not confident. They don't know what they're doing. Should I trust them? And there is, you know, there's a fine line of being overly like confident, but like show some confidence. Say like, I know what I'm doing. I have a good lesson. I'm going to come here. I'm going to teach it. I'm going to do my thing. I got this. This is how I do it. Take it or leave it. Um, yeah, I've been doing that and it works. So if that's where your holdup is, am I good enough for this? Can I really do this? Do I really have what it takes? Pretend. Pretend you do. And then suddenly you do. That's literally how it works. Surprise. Um, Rachel says, nice card. Jackie says, Bonnie, this is your stag. That is interesting. Bonnie told us a story in Embody Astrology yesterday about a stag in her yard that would not move after turning the lights on and everything. Really wanted to be there. And look at that earth in the middle. That looks like that little patch of grass in the middle of your yard. April says, oh, Jackie, thank you. Intuiting this third card being a possible input. Brilliant. Oh, bingo. So the reason I had that huge when these three cards first came out. Um, so, okay, what is the eclipse season urging us to spearhead? Just take control of whatever you want to do right now. Just own it, right? It's just claim it as yours and you're already doing it and just keep doing it. Fake it till you make it. That was the, that's this card. I had this huge because seventh house is the, where the descendant is on the chart, right? It's, it's the half. And then the first house is on the other half of the chart. Um, so this is Aries Libra axis. This is where the, um, the solar eclipse was 
was in Libra in the Aries axis, right? So self and partners. Who am I? How do I relate? And then the midheaven is at the top of the chart, way up here. So it's almost like this spread is telling us that like you have to figure out who you are to bring your highest self to the relationship so that you can excel and like put out whatever you desire into the universe to leave your legacy. The midheaven represents like what kind of legacy you're going to leave behind, what you're going to be known for. Suzanne says, I always vacillate on this. I call it dancing on the table. That feeling of shyness and self-doubt, then worrying that I am showing off, calling too much attention to myself, dancing on the table. Who cares if you're calling too much attention to yourself? Why, why are we not programmed to be proud of the things that we're good at? I'm trying to think of an example. Um, I mean, I have to make this personal, right? First off, I have to make this personal. I know a lot of you guys have been following me for a long time. And the comments that I see come through on Insight Timer show me that you value what I'm putting out there. I'm dancing on the table right now. I know that I'm good at reading Oracle cards. I literally, like, I'm not, I'm not trying to, like, intuit and sit here and be like, ooh, seventh house means this and that. I'm reading what the author wrote for me, right? Like, I'm, I'm using someone else's work. I'm reading it to you. And then I'm describing how it can relate to the astrology that's happening. How it can relate to what kind of energy we're bringing to this session today. Some might see that as me dancing on the table, right? Like, pff, who does she think she is? Like, where are her astrology certificates? Surprise, I have zero. Um, and if they want to judge me for what I'm doing, that's their shadows being triggered by me celebrating what I'm good at and what I love to do. If I would have not danced on the table here on Insight Timer and not come and like shown my true self and shown my authenticity, the more I'm here, the more time I spend here, the less I feel like I have to perform. And the more I feel like I can genuinely just tell you guys what's up in my life and be myself. Um, the only thing I hold back from is my language. I do swear a lot more in real life and that's just because I don't know about the Insight Timer platform and how they would be about that. Um, but that doesn't change my message, you know, it's still, it's all the same. But if I wouldn't have had that courage to dance on the table and show off what I like to do, like, not saying that I'm this guru and you guys need me to grow, but like, how much growth have you guys all gotten from me being here? Maybe not even necessarily from me and my words, but from interacting with all the people in the chat who have all been attracted to my dance. You know, like you guys are all here for a reason. And it's not like the Jackie show. That's what I so love about this Insight Timer is that it's the whole community. You guys have as much banter with each other in that chat than I do back and forth with all you guys. So just take that as a reason to dance on your table. And if people have a problem with it, it's just because your confidence is triggering their insecurity and they're going to try to project it on you because it's so hard to look at your insecurities and, and own them and admit that you have an insecurity. It's so much easier to just, well, they're bad because they're doing it because they can't see themselves doing it. And I'm spent just for that. We still have another, we have one more deck. I'm going to pull from this Tree of Life Oracle in just a second. I'm going to read I'm going to read your your comments. Christine says, "Thank you for your download. Now I understand why I picked 1 and 3 and 2 blew my mind. I love it, Christine." Greg, interesting how it's a stag. The stag doesn't hide its beautiful horns. Exactly. Does the stag try to like file down his horns on trees like, "Oh, I got to be smaller. I can't take up that much space." No, he uses them as a protective force. Bonnie says, I love when Jackie says, I'm the shit. <laughs> Fake it till you make it, right? Like, there was a time, and there still are times that I say it, and I'm like, yeah, am I really? 
But like, I'm just owning it. So that's it. Greg, your dancing inspires my dancing. Thank you. And I had to be inspired by someone else's dancing to realize like, oh, I could do that. You know, you, you need, it's, there's levels to everything. Sharon says, thank you for sharing. That totally resonates with me. Beautiful. Elena, thank you so much. Waiting for this deck. Excited. I'll get there, I promise. I'm just on a... I haven't been here in three weeks. I gotta make up for some time. April says, don't you love that us on Insight show up to watch you amazing teachers dancing and then we dance? Yes! Celebrate it. I'm celebrating all of your dances. They make me very, very happy. Chantel, plus your personal stories. They are so inspiring. You are inspiring. I think I speak for all of us that you are brilliant, put so much effort into your work, and have an am amazing way of explaining and tying it all together. Thank you, Chantel. That means a lot to me to hear those words. I appreciate that. There's a gnat that's been flying around my face for like 20 minutes. I'm trying to get it. Uh, fake it till you make it, Greg. Makes me think of believing in myself in the moment until I can believe it for my future. I like that. I like that. All right. Um, eclipse season wants us to be our best selves, essentially, in all areas of our life, in our aspirations, right? This could be career um, and in our relationships. That's pretty, pretty much it. Be your best self. The gnat has a message. Bonnie, you're probably right. I'm too in it. I'm trying to rush to get you guys out of here. Uh, Christine, but I have a wolf pillow now, so you could just pretend that that's a dog. Christine says she misses Darla, but I got, I got a new wolf pillow. And I actually have another one. It was a whole thing. Uh, what does November 2023 have in store for us? With the Tree of Life Oracle. Feel free to send your energy into this deck. Sarah says, I've been reading tarot since 94, and I still feel like an imposter. I've been on the verge of dancing on the table for years, literally years. It is all because of my mother and the fears she imposed on me. Thank you for all of this insightfulness today, everyone. Thank you for tying it all together, right? Wasn't, wasn't it the Midheaven card that was telling us about check what your definition of success has to do with how you were raised you don't have to hang on to the fears that you were raised with you get to clear them you're allowed to clear them <sighs> yeah if um Sorry, that was a big sigh because I, I didn't even get to do my little spiel and one card came out and I was trying to decide if it was right or not and it, it is the card. Um, if you guys have been enjoying today's session, if you'd like to offer an energy exchange in the form of a donation, the whole Apple thing, if you want to pay 30% to Apple for offering the service, if you're on an Apple device, you can donate here in the live. If you're on an Android, doesn't matter. If you don't want to pay the 30% Apple, your, the money coming out of your account stays the same. The amount coming to me drops 30% because 30% goes to Apple. Uh, if you don't want that to be a thing, you can go onto my Insight Timer Teacher Profile page and donate there if you'd like. Um, they're always appreciated, never expected. I do um, astrology readings and a whole bunch of other stuff on donation basis. Uh, I have been limiting my schedule, so it's booked I think all of November. I think I have like one more appointment in November. Um, I'm limiting my schedule because I'm going to create more courses for Insight Timer. So I'm working on a shadow work course right now. It's in process. Uh, I'm excited. It's been a while since I've made a course. Um, but anyway, if you want to work with me one on one, you can check out my Insight Timer profile. My link tree is there and all of my links are there. So you can figure out <laughs> how to get to my website. It's pretty easy, there's not that many links. My email list is there if you wanna stay on my email list and get updates from what I'm doing. There's a link to my podcast. There's links to my social media stuff. So yeah, hang out with me there. But November, wow, November 2023 brings us the 29th path of the moon. Evolution simplicity, the animal kingdom. 
Um, this is Pisces in astrology. All things watery are found here. The subconscious mind, emotional responses, intuition, and family. The Piscean energy in your own chart will offer up more insights. Interesting. Ooh, se- oh, Pisces. Se- come back on Friday and I will talk about Saturn stationing direct at zero degrees of Pisces. So that's going to be a big impact for this month. As the goddess of the moon rises from her bath, she's moving through the subconscious waters into awareness of her surroundings. The animals with her symbolize evolution as well as sensuality and protection. We all evolve, at least we'd like to think so, and we do it in many ways, emotionally, physically, and as a species. It's how we survive. Are you surviving or thriving? Are you heading in the direction you want to be heading in? And if not, what does your intuitive mind tell you needs to evolve? The moon's governship over family matters could suggest a family situation needs your attention now. Is it a question of offering support or asking for it? Water and the moon are both instruments that unlock your ability to see through the veil. So your awareness of the astral worlds, scrying techniques, and intuitive knowing may be increasing and could be worthy of further exploration at this time. Excuse me. Ask yourself what subconscious patterning is stopping you from receiving things you need and desire. What do you want? If it's a huge bath and a wolf, that's so me, then double joy. You're able to see the future, you. You're able to see the future you. For now, focus on moving toward whatever you feel is you're here to do, without losing sight of the small everyday tasks and blessings that will get you there. (sighs) Debbie, the moon, well, we talked about the, the solar eclipse on October 14th, that was at 21 of Libra. And then we talked about the lunar eclipse on October 28th. That was at five of Taurus. Um, So this gives us an activation for this card. It says the ebb and flow of the moon can help you chart the small changes you need to make. A moon diary or journal will help you make the most of her cyclic nature and offer a map for change. What does November 2023 have in store for us? Understanding your intuition. That's what I'm getting from this. Understanding your intuition and um, feeling into the cyclic nature of how life works. And this is actually affirming that class that I just purchased before this, this workshop that I just purchased. It's about a whole cyclic thing that I'm not going to go into detail about because I don't understand just yet. (sighs) It's interesting that the moon comes out at the start of November asking about November because, like I said, Saturn is currently retrograde through Pisces. So Saturn's moving backwards asking us to review our spiritual structures. Saturn structure, Pisces woo-woo. Saturn started his retrograde on June 17th, so it's been quite some time. We've been in this time of reflecting on your spiritual practices. Am I doing, you know, the right thing? Am I doing what brings me joy? Am I doing what I've been taught to do? Or am I doing what feels right to me? So it's interesting that the month of November is this huge intuitive Pisces, magical, mystical, poetic, month. Because now, I'll talk about this more in detail on Friday, but Saturn moving direct is giving us the opportunity to take what we've reviewed and do something with it. Go forward with it. Change up our spiritual practices even. Um, thank you, Debbie. April, I feel so moved in every way. Likewise. 
thank you guys for being here. I'm looking, I'm glancing at this one more time just to see. Yeah, what fears came up from your family that don't serve you, right? They might have served you to get to where you are now, um, but it's okay to say, like, that's not for me anymore, you know? I will be here again on Friday at 8.15 Central Time, the same as all of the time. And on Friday, we're going to talk about Saturn moving direct. Let me see if there's anything else. Multiple oppositions. There are some oppositions happening in the sky as well. So thank you guys for being here. Thanks for staying the extra 20 minutes with me. Love you guys so much. Uh, this will be posted on my YouTube channel later today. So if you came in midway, you can always search my name on YouTube um, and see the replays. Or you can go through my Insight Timer link tree and look for the YouTube channel there. Uh, if you guys would like to offer your energy exchanges in the forms of donations, feel free to do so after I leave the live or hop over to my teacher profile and do so. Or you can use that PayPal link that's in my link tree. Um, it's a whole thing. Everything always works out, whatever you decide to do. Uh, if the money thing is not for you, Offering your energy in the form of interacting with my stuff really helps me as well. So if you've taken something out of this reading, please feel free to comment on the YouTube and let us know uh, what you took out of it. Share it, like it, subscribe to my channel. All those things, it's all energy, right? Money's not the only form of energy. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Wonderful to be here with you all, says Jackie. And she may be speaking for me as well. Katie says, I often miss you because I'm on the West Coast. Please consider some later start times. Katie, that's exactly why I put my stuff on Insight Timer. This is the time that works for me the best. So this is what I have to stick with. Gotta put myself first, but I record all the stuff so that I can throw it up for you guys. Carrie, thank you, Jackie. I always feel very supported after your lives. Much love to you and all. Daphne, glad you're back. Thank you to everyone. Oh, that's right. Thanks, Bonnie, for reminding me about that. Patreon. Yeah, I have this group called Embody Astrology on Patreon. Um, those start times vary. <laughs> Sometimes we start uh, about half hour from now. Um, and that is a twice monthly group Zoom meeting. Um, and we first talk about the next zodiac season that's coming up so like we're in scorpio season right now so our first meeting was about just describing all the scorpio energy and then i give you guys an embodiment technique to bring that zodiac energy through the season so that you're able to embody what the universe is giving to you and then about halfway through we meet again to check in ask questions, check your progress, see how things are going. Um, we started it in March with Aries season. People have been coming and going, like you don't have to do the whole thing start to finish. All the replays are on Patreon, um, but you're more than welcome to join that as well. It's a nice little community. Thank you guys. All right, I will see you on Friday at 8.15 Central. Sending love to all. Namaste. Happy eclipse season. Happy Scorpio season. <laughs>